Audi, Immortalium here, and you might have noticed recently that I reviewed a film, a short film in fact, called Legend of the Forest, which is one of Osama Tezuka's experimental short films. And today I thought I would take a look at another one of his experimental short films. And interestingly, in contrast to Legend of the Forest being one of the last that Osama Tezuka made, I thought today that I would take a look at his first. It's called Tales of a Street Corner. And Tales of a Street Corner has an interesting little bit of production history. At the time, Osama Tezuka had just recently set up his animation studio, Mushi Production, and was figuring out what type of content he wanted to produce. On one hand, he wanted to make a profitable merchandising machine in the form of Astro Boy. And on the other hand, he also wanted to be experimental and uh, to kind of push the medium of animation to make a bit of a statement. And because of that, uh, Mushi Production held an event uh, in order to be able to show off their work. And at the event was shown three different works. Two experimental short films, those being Tales of a Street Corner and Mail, and also Astro Boy. And of course, as you might imagine, a lot of the business people or who were at that showing were much, much more interested in Astro Boy because of the potential merchandising associated with him. But nonetheless, the other two shorts were very well received, uh, Tales of a Street Corner in particular, and actually ended up winning several awards at several festivals. So it was very well received at the time, even if it was a very niche product in comparison to Astro Boy. So having spoken about that, I guess the question of course is, is Tales of a Street Corner any good? And that's what I'm going to be discussing today. So let's get started. So what is the story of Tales of a Street Corner? Tales of a Street Corner is set at a, you guessed it, a particular street corner, uh, where several stories are intertwining. On one hand, there is a little girl who has lost her teddy bear. On the other hand, there is also a family of mice. There are also posters that are kind of doing their own thing, as well as the story of a moth. And all of these stories are intertwining with each other over the course of the 40 minutes that the film runs for. And as the story progresses, it turns from a relatively playful piece to one that is a little bit darker. It has a bit of a darker tone as it proceeds, and it manages to convey this surprisingly well, this shift in tone. And yet the ending is relatively hopeful. In terms of the main story pieces that were being told, I thought they were told quite well. I liked the way that they were interweaved with each other. There was this incredibly playful atmosphere early on in the piece, which I really, really enjoyed. And the shift in tone was actually very expertly done, I think. Um, so from that perspective, it did really well, and it ends on a very powerful image, surprisingly powerful. Now, if I had a criticism of the story, it's that of all of the stories that were being told, I was least interested in the moth. The moth doesn't really do much in the story. In fact, it actually kind of impedes some of the other stories. I felt that it took a bit more away from the piece than it added. Uh, but in general, I really liked the story. I liked the way it was conveyed. In fact, I'll be discussing a bit more about the way it was conveyed once we get to music and voice acting. I really, really did enjoy watching this film in terms of the storytelling. Now, with regards to the animation, now, you might notice that this film has a very distinct visual style. Uh, this was a very early piece from Mushi Production. As I said, it was one of the first things that they did. And because of that, they weren't afraid to kind of experiment, as well as to learn a lot of the lessons associated with creating animation. And one thing that really stands out to me in terms of the visual style of this movie is it actually really feels like almost a cardboard cutout piece. Now, I know it isn't. This was actually hand-drawn animated, but the way that it looks, the way it compares to the background, to other characters, etc., etc., it looks almost like someone's cut out a piece of cardboard and is moving them and taking pictures of the frames. And admittedly, it isn't the best animated in the world. There are some moments where the animation can seem a little jerky. I do have to confess that while this visual style might not appeal to everyone, that I found the images very appealing to look at, very charming, and I think it lended a lot to the piece. So while the animation itself isn't perfect, I really do find the visuals very charming. Now with regards to music and voice acting, usually I tackle music first, but let me tackle the voice acting here, uh, because I simply want to say that there is none. <laughs> there is no voice acting, uh, no dialogue at all. It is all conveyed through visuals and music, similar to Legend of the Forest. And with regards to the music itself, I think it's actually done very well. While not quite as memorable as Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony, which was used in Legend of the Forest, the music does actually have a very kind of playful charm to it early on in the movie. 
that kind of lulls you into a sense of security, into a sense of playfulness. And then as the movie proceeds and it gets steadily darker, it actually does a very good job of shifting tone. And that's one of the things that I think really contributed to this movie, the fact that that tone shift didn't feel that jarring. And I think the music has a lot to do with that. So in terms of the music, I think it suited the film really, really well. So overall, what are my thoughts on Tales of a Street Corner? I ended up really enjoying Tales of a Street Corner and considering it's the first short film that's presented on this box set, I found it a really, really strong way to start off watching Osama Tezuka's experimental short films. While it isn't quite as good as some of the later experimental shorts that Osama Tezuka would end up developing, I think that it's a very strong opening piece uh, to this box set, to Mushi production, and I think that has a lot of merit. I think it is well worth watching, whether you be a fan of Osama Tezuka, like I am, whether you be a fan of animation, like I am, or if you're interested in very artistic movies. I think there's a lot that's very appealing about this short film. So that was my review of Tales of a Street Corner from Osama Tezuka. Let me know your own thoughts on Tales of a Street Corner. Have you watched the movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What did you think of the visual style and the animation? Did you think that that shift in tone was done well, or did you not care for it? And of course, if you have any additional information about Osama Tezuka, about Tales of Street Corner, about his experimental short films, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support the channel, I would encourage you to use my Amazon and Write Stuff affiliate links in the description below. When you purchase an anime or manga through those affiliate links, not only are you supporting me, not only are you supporting the channel, but you're also supporting the anime and manga industry. So I would highly encourage you to purchase your anime and manga through those affiliate links. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.